Four Steps to Improve Student Engagement, Episode 558. The 10 Minute Teacher Podcast with Vicki Davis. Every weekday, you'll learn powerful, practical ways to be a more remarkable teacher today. Today, we're talking with Jeremy Heath, 16 year elementary educator. Now he's speaking and coaching and doing workshops and that sort of thing. But Jeremy, one of your expertise is in improving student engagement. You have a little clip you want us to play of one of your students. Can you introduce it for us before we play the clip? I sure can. And I'm so excited to share that clip with you. It just was an authentic moment. I just so happened to be the last week of school where I return and I revisit what the point of education is before they go off to middle school. Um, So I just said, just talk about what school means to you and how learning has maybe developed and and changed in your mind throughout this year. So this is what she happened to say. Wow. So, Jeremy, we're going to talk about this is a great introduction coming from your student. Four steps to improve student engagement. What is your first step so we teachers can get engaged students like this? I, isn't that amazing? Um, I am. I almost teared up uh, and cried during that clip as I was filming. It was just amazing what she said because she is speaking about true learning and that the love of learning and the passion for learning. And as you heard her say, she moved from I'm just doing work because I'm told to do that or I don't want to get in trouble to craving and loving and igniting a passion in her to do more, to challenge herself. And I think that is where step one really resonates with teachers is if you could focus on how to engage your students in learning. You see, once they want to learn, they will learn so much more. So on day one, I know that the teacher guide says start on page one, chapter one in your math book, but you might want to take some time to explain and provide opportunities for kids to understand what learning is. What what is school? Why are we here? And to capture that love of learning. So step one would be make engagement your focus and your planning. So yes, of course, plan out your lesson, but also plan on how you're going to engage your students because engagement goes well beyond compliance. It is when the learner actively participates in meaningful and relevant learning and they give their best effort. They're motivated to help themselves and others. So find a way to emphasize how to make that happen as you're planning for your lesson. Totally. It has to be part of it. Okay. What's our second? Well, the second one is, okay, so you've made planning and engagement an important part of your process. Now make it an important part of your teaching. Disappointingly, so many times I've witnessed and in my own career, I've taught to a room full of people and I'm not really sure if they're engaged or even if they're listening. And I, when I first started teaching, I read from the teacher curriculum. I did exactly what I was supposed to do, but I found it meaningless if students aren't wanting to learn it or wanting to be a part of the process. The learning was not happening. I was just a teacher in the front of the room talking to a group of people. I was not a teacher teaching to students who want to learn. So step two is definitely make engagement the focus of your teaching while you're delivering the lesson. Make sure that your students are engaged in the learning. And remember, engage means that they're giving their best effort, they're motivated to learn, and they're actively participating in meaningful learning. And we want to always watch for that active participation. And we we have to be engaged too, don't we? Oh, we sure do. See, <laughs> if we're standing up there and delivering lessons, I'm thinking about that um, what Ferris Bueller's Day Off <laughs> yeah. teacher that just Bueller, oh, Bueller. Oh, goodness. Okay, what's right. our third? Step three is, so this is really awesome. My students helped me come up with this. So it was October of this past year where a substitute left the most amazing feedback I've ever received and said that your students were the most engaged students I've ever seen. They worked on uh, what they were supposed to. They asked each other questions. They were helping, guiding each other. They were supporting each other and they were on task the entire day, which is what we all want as teachers. So the next day, I asked my students, so what is 
what is engaging you? What is causing you to be so engaged? And that's where on Twitter I posted their their results because we spent a whole day talking about what is engagement and what disengages you. And for the first time in my 16 years of being a teacher, I asked the students what engages you in authentic learning. And their answers became my three principles. So if you visit my website, there are three key principles to authentic engagement. And this is coming from the kids themselves. I used to think that it was my costumes and my thematic and energetic classrooms and themes. But actually, the top answers were make the learning valued. Students want to know the value of a lesson. And if they understand the value of it, of how it connects to them and how it connects to their future and their future learning, then they really appreciate and engage themselves a lot more. The next one is make the learning accessible. And this is where like a Goldilocks type of thinking where it's not too easy, not too hard, because I found that um, both ends of my spectrum, my, my struggling students, if it's too hard, the content, then they disengage or my more advanced students, if it's too easy, then they disengage. And then the third is making the learning stimulating. A lot of times this might sound like making the learning fun, but I asked the students themselves and they said where they find fun is that the learning is challenging, it's interesting, and there's multiple ways for me to learn it and for me to demonstrate my learning. So those three principles, again, are make the learning valued, make the learning accessible, and make the learning stimulating. And those three parts or principles to engagement are also what I do when I go out and do speaking engagements or I do workshops with teachers. I can spend a whole day on each one of those, and I have a ton of strategies and tools and different techniques and resources that you can use to capture those um, principles of valued, accessible, and stimulating. So it actually sounds like your students actually had a fourth because in stimulating, they said that it's multiple ways, which is differentiating, huh? So stimulating right. and differentiating, I guess, at the same time. Right. And, right. and differentiating, you can differentiate in the content or how you deliver the lesson or how many ways that you deliver it or um, the technology that you use. But biggest aha moment that I had with this experience this year. And I was excited. I was writing this stuff down and they were helping me brainstorm and they were getting excited. Is that for the first time as well, they were taking a moment to stop and think, how do I learn the best? And so principle three is that we want to make sure they're authentically engaged. And you've given us three principles of authentic engagement. What's our fourth? The step four is commit. Um, I've worked with many different teachers over the years. I've worked in five different schools, all different sorts of uh, demographics from anywhere from Title I to more affluent to more gifted type schools to refugee schools with high ELL population. And these principles work in every school that I go to because your focus is on the learner, not the content. So step four is to commit to being engaged, commit to engagement. The teacher guide will tell you to move on to ne the next chapter no matter what. But if your students aren't engaged and your data is showing you that you should not move on, stick to your gut. All of us teachers have an instinct and we have a gut instinct to, well, I don't think this is working. I need to go back and revisit this. So step four is commit to the engagement. The results will follow and you won't have people just sitting in a chair listening to you. You're going to have students – that are learning and they are going to crave more learning from you if you just commit to the engagement. And that's true. That means they're on the journey with you because, you know, when when teachers press forward and yes, many of us teachers were pressured to move forward. Maybe when kids aren't ready, I'm not, but I know many who are. But think of it as at a certain point when a kid is disengaged, it's like them jumping off the bus. And then when you get to your final destination, you're wondering why half the kids aren't there. Well, you lost them back in week one or week six or week 10, and they just never could get caught up ever again, you know? Yeah, you know, and Vicki, you said the word pressure, and it's so true. <laughs> we have pressure. And I said, I don't know where this pressure is coming from to move on, right? Oh, we have to move on. We have to move on. I don't know where this pressure is coming from. I talked to um, my colleague last year. I said, where's this pressure coming from? It's not coming from our principal. Our principal believes in all students should learn and all students are expected to grow and progress. 
So we are not in the classroom to move on to the next chapter. We're in that classroom to grow academic, social, and emotional uh, growth in students. So then I thought, okay, is the pressure coming from the district? The district also wants the same thing. They want to help us close achievement gaps and opportunity gaps. They want us to reach equity. They want us to make sure that students are succeeding. So I don't know where the pressure is to move on to the next chapter. In many ways, I think we're creating that pressure in our own minds. You think it's an ego thing where we say, I'm the teacher who covers the whole book? I don't know. I I haven't met any teachers like that, but I think that we have a book and that is where the pressure comes from, is that the expectation is we have to finish that book. Whereas that's not the reason why I became a teacher in the first place. I became a teacher because I was disengaged as a child. I spent more time in the principal's office and in the hallway than I did in the classroom. And that's because of what you said earlier. I was disengaged. I was checked out and I never got checked back in. So my whole core and passion of teaching comes from that engagement, not from teaching out of a textbook. And I have not met many teachers, and maybe there are some out there, but I have not met many teachers where I ask, why did you become a teacher? And they say, to deliver the textbook in the way that it's supposed to be delivered. It all stems from, I want to ignite the passion of reading. I love math, and I think all students should love math. Or... I just want to be there for students and develop a better future. And never do I hear the word textbook. So I don't know why when we get into the classroom, our focus is all about the textbook. When we know in our core, it should be about the students and the learner and how they're learning. Yeah. And some of us just get rid of the textbook and write our own stuff. So, okay. So uh, Jeremy Heath, uh, four steps to improve student engagement and Teachers, I do want to come back to one big point that we do have to commit to engagement. We have to commit to being engaged ourselves, not being on autopilot, and then making sure our students are engaged. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you for having me.